Feanor, the son of Finwë, the High King of the Noldoran Elves, landed in the Waste of Lamoth with his host. Feanor had burned the ships at Losgar, the ships that belonged to the Teleri that he used to cross the sea, condemning his half-brothers Fingolfin and Finarfin, and all of their children to cross the Helcaraxe, the grinding ice where many perished. Morgoth, the Dark Lord, formerly known as Melkor, the mightiest of the Valar, sought to push the Noldor back into the sea. Feanor's people set up a camp at the Lake of Mithrim. The host of Morgoth took them at unawares. They assailed Feanor and began the Dagor Nuin Gilead, the battle under the stars. The Noldor were victorious despite their numbers being much fewer than the host of Morgoth. The light of Amman was not yet dimmed in their eyes and they were strong and swift and deadly in anger, and their swords were long and terrible. The orcs fled before them and they were driven forth from Mithrim with a great slaughter. The orcs fled into Ard Galen, the plain north of Dorthonion and south of Angband. The armies of Morgoth that were attacking Círdan at his havens were called back to help his host against the Noldor. Celegorm, the son of Feanor, came upon them from Ithel Sirion and drove them into the Fen of Serech. The battle lasted ten days and Morgoth's hopes were darkened. Feanor pressed on in his wrath and rage and thought to reach Morgoth himself. He laughed aloud as he wielded his sword, rejoicing that he had dared the wrath of the Valar and the evils of the road, that he might see the hour of his vengeance. Feanor was fully unknowing of the strength of Vangband and Morgoth's defense. This would be his doom. This would not have stopped Feanor even if he knew. As Feanor charged, Morgoth released the Balrogs, the demons of terror, spirits who aided him in his initial rebellion. Feanor's last stand was most worthy of song. He was wrapped in fire and wounded many times, until he was smote into the ground by Gothmog, the lord of Balrogs. Feanor would have died there until his seven sons aided him and the Balrogs fled. But Feanor's doom was decided. His sons carried him back to Mithrim, but at Ithel Sirion, Feanor halted them. He looked upon the Thangorodrim, and he knew the Noldor would never be successful in fulfilling their oath against Morgoth to reclaim the Silmarils from his Iron Crown. Feanor cursed Morgoth three times, one for each Silmaril, and beckoned to his sons to fulfill their oath to avenge him. Feanor was then consumed in flame, and became like ash. He had never left the halls of Mandos while his spirit endured. Within Mithrim, there were native Sindar, the people of Thingol. Thingol used to be Elwë, the third ambassador to the west, and friend of Finwë, the father of Feanor. The Noldor were glad to see kinsmen, but their languages were very different due to their sundering. From these grey elves of Mithrim, the Noldor learned about Elu Thingol, the king of Doriath and lord of Beleriand. The news of the Noldor went to Menegroth, the thousand caves in Doriath, Thingol's capital. They also went to Círdan, the lord of the havens of Brethambar and Eglarest. All of the elves were filled with hope and resolve as the elves of the west had returned, although they knew not why the return happened. In the hour of Feanor's death, an embassy from Angband came to the Noldor and acknowledged defeat and offered terms of surrender. They even offered to surrender a Silmaril. Though who would trust the words of Morgoth, the betrayer, the black foe of the world? Mithros, the eldest son of Feanor, convinced his brothers to deny this, yet to meet his emissaries on the road. Each host came with greater numbers than were agreed. Morgoth sent Balrogs with his mightier host. Mithros, the son of Feanor, was taken alive by Morgoth's command, and he was brought to Angban. The High Prince of the Noldor was about to be undone, just like his father, Feanor. Morgoth sent word to the Noldor at their camp in Hithlum that if the Noldor returned to the west, then Mithros would be returned to them. The Noldor were both distrustful of Melkor and bound by their oath. Morgoth hung Mithros from the peak of the Fangorodrim by one wrist, and he was bound with a band of steel. Thus was ended the battle under the stars, the Dagor Nuin Giliath, an initial defeat of the Noldor, yet only the beginning of the long and lengthy War of the Jewels.